got a, a simple idea that um, may have a, an effect on the way you look at things. So if, if you don't know Trimble, we uh, do a lot of things related to localization centers, sensors, and how to apply those to areas like surveying, construction, building construction, agriculture, GIS. So we do a, a lot of things outdoors that makes people more productive in their work. S and we're at the point where we're saying, well, we can do all these things indoors. We just need the right technologies. And for some of the products that we have now, they're very accurate and very expensive. Um, but uh, a group that I am associated with started to look at the um, problem of locating firefighters that Jalal talked about. And we looked at all the different sensor technologies. And being part of Trimble, um, there was a lot of visibility into what is happening in the construction market where all the uh, building supplies that are coming into job sites, they're all tagged with RFID. And all of our um, asset tracking logistics um, products are all starting to locate RFID tagged items. So we um, we actually bought a RFID company, Thing Magic, because it, we view it as core to Trimble. And uh, one of our guys came up with a um, innovative idea to instead of placing RFID tags on everyone, uh, we'll make a small RFID reader that we can put on everyone. And then we put RFID tags in the infrastructure and you can locate people within the infrastructure. And one of the reasons um, RFID is interesting is, is because it's a global standard and there's spectrum allocated and there's commodity RFID tags, and you know, we're going to be driving the size and the power out of the RFID reader. And that's just part of the progression. And these are just some details on the um, RFID specification. And what it really gives you is a, a global um, wireless interface between the reader and any tag. I mentioned some of that about RFID tags coming into buildings. Today, in this room, there may be only a handful of RFID tags, but five years from now, everything that comes in will be tagged. So there could be hundreds or thousands of tags in here, the chairs, the tables, the floor. So there's going to be this cloud of RFID information uh, and that may be another way of starting to view what's coming along. People may start putting the information in the tags so that when you're in the location, your, your ability to read that tag gives you that information. So you don't actually need to use all the wireless communication back to, to a lot of servers that you have to maintain. The people who own the environments can put the data in their environment. And this tag that's shown there is, is actually this big. And we bought a roll of them, and they're about 20 cents each. But if we bought 1,000 rolls of them, they'd probably be 10 cents each. So a room like this, if you just wanted to know if you're in this room, you could put one tag. But if you wanted to know which corner of the room, and if you wanted to get to like a meter level of accuracy, you'd probably have to put 30 tags in here. So that's still 
the cost of the tags is still under $10. And I've actually put tags in rooms like this for demonstrations and, and you know, for me to, to go up in a ladder and put the tags in only took like a couple hours. So someone that knows what they're doing can do it much quicker. So tags are coming and it's not very expensive to put tags into a building. Okay. And the, the nice thing about RFID tags is they're passive. And it, you know, there's, there's no wiring, you just stick it. Or, you, or it comes embedded in the light or the, the vent or in the carpet tiles. Uh, so in terms of maintaining the infrastructure, um, the cost is very low. Uh, and one of the reasons we like this for the firefighters is that if they come to a building and there's no power, the infrastructure still works. And the only problem is getting the tags into the infrastructure. And I talked about some of these points. Uh, it assumes that the user has an RFID reader. Uh, right now, the uh, near field um, readers that are starting to show up in cell phones, they can only read a couple of centimeters. Um, if we put the same level of effort into cost reducing uh, a UHF RFID reader ASIC, uh, you could put, put them in a cell phone and if you had tags in the floor, it only has to read about two meters. And if they're in the ceiling, it has to read around three or four meters. So you could put a reader in the phone. Um, and then not only could you use that for lo localization, but then you could use that for contextual awareness for wherever you are and that could relate to productivity in your job, or if you're shopping, um, you'd be able to read information about items on a shelf. Um, and since the information is in the, the tag and the, the tag infrastructure, uh, there's no, and the, the calculation of the location is done in the handheld device, there's no privacy issues unless you choose to share that information with someone else. And this, this just gives you an idea of how it works. There's tags in the environment and they have location information in them. You can put other information into them. Uh, interesting, uh, Boeing has some tags that they put on aircraft parts with thousands and thousands of kilobytes of storage and they record the entire history of that part, its manufacture, its maintenance. Uh, so you can use the tags for more than just localization. But the, um, the reader sends out RF energy, the tag collects enough energy to turn on, and then in, through a process of controlling the characteristics of the antenna, it reflects energy back to the reader as data. The reader has algorithms that calculate the position and then you can use it where you are or you can send it to someone who needs that information more than you do. And from a system level, um, the devices we've been prototyping have GPS so that you can go from positioning outdoors to positioning indoors. And whenever you can read an RFID tag, you turn off the GPS to save power. Um, so you have a GPS reader, RFID reader, processor, radio. Um, and this is for a case where you're sending the location back somewhere else. So you can send this through your uh, GSM or cell phone or it can go through Wi-Fi or 
for the first responder. We um, found some other radios that penetrate buildings better than cell phones. So there could be a Wi-Fi radio in there too, and it could transition from you know, GPS to Wi-Fi to RFID and just use whichever in, you know, information is available. And that's, that's it.